Picasso, Monet, formerly known as Prince. People call them artists. So when talking about DJs, why do you get this reaction? Yo, DJs are artists, innit, mate? They just push buttons, mate. So does your mum, bruv. Yeah, she works at NASA. So can we call DJs artists? Or are they something else? To answer this question, I needed to find out what an artist was. I could have just gone to the dictionary, but instead I watched 40 hours of TED Talks, read articles, and spoke to leading industry experts. Is DJing art? Absolutely fucking not. The last time I saw a DJ do anything artistic was when I saw them go to Greg's and put some ketchup on a sausage roll. And the answers I uncovered surprised me. I also surveyed my Instagram audience. Come on, YouTube videos have been made based on less. I asked them whether they thought DJs were artists, performers, or both. And I'm gonna reveal the results at the end of the video. The first thing we need to do is break down the different kinds of arts. Let's take a look at the fine arts first and see if we can legit hang a picture of Armin Van Buren in the Louvre. So what does a fine artist do? It's like paintings, sculptures, that sort of shit. Who's your favourite fine artist? I really like that one with the nunchucks. Nunchucks? Yeah, the chap with the orange headband. Wait, are you talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Fine art usually involves creating a physical object that's meant to have some kind of aesthetic quality. We're talking about things like paintings, drawings and sculptures. Unless you're a DJ that's made of marble, it's difficult to argue that we belong in the fine arts category. Let me ask you this, can a DJ draw an oil painting of a duck pond on a sunny afternoon. I think not. The second kind of art is performing art. Performing arts are where some kind of artistic expression happens through a live performance in front of an audience. This sounds a bit more promising. Although DJs primarily perform other people's music, the way that they combine them and blend them means that they're actually creating something new. In the same way a photographer has to choose the right light, the right subject and the right framing to create a particular mood, a DJ does a similar thing in the way that they select tracks and how they combine them. This brings us on to a really important topic in this whole discussion, intention. This is the idea that in order to be an artist, there has to be some kind of intention behind the work that you're creating. The artist needs to be expressing something or trying to invoke some kind of emotional reaction from the audience. I think the real question here is not are DJs artists, but are DJs not artists? in the postmodernist sense of the word. You've probably heard DJ sets that don't seem to gel together, they don't make any sense, and it's not clear what the DJ is trying to make us think or feel. There are two main schools of thought around artist intent. In the mid 20th century, two lads, literary critic W.K. Wimsat and philosopher Monroe Beardsley took the position that artistic intention was irrelevant. They called this the intentional fallacy, which sounds a bit like a Viagra pill. Let's take the dance floor filler Umbop as an example. Watson's intention with the lyrics to this tune may have been to create a melancholy story about loss and pain, but that doesn't affect the fact that everyone without fail thinks it's the biggest rinser of the 1990s. You probably have a favourite track that takes you back to a particular time and place and makes you feel a certain way. There's no way for Andy C to know that you played TC Tap Ho when you walked down the aisle at your wedding. The intention he had for playing that track makes absolutely no difference to your experience of it. The feelings you get when listening to it are completely individual to you, and it can move you in a way that's completely different to the person standing next to you, even though you're both listening to the same track. To sum up this school of thought, it's basically saying that it's up to you as the individual to experience the art in whatever way you see fit. A bit later, two more chaps called Stephen Knapp and Walter Ben Michaels came along to challenge this school of thought. These two literary theorists, whatever the hell that is, believe the artist's intention is the only one that matters. If a DJ plays a track that they intended to make you feel happy, if you don't feel happy, you're wrong and I'm going to call the bouncers and eject you from the club right now. Yeah, we've got someone on the dance floor and they're not interpreting the music in the right way. Get them out of here. The core of their argument is that the artist's intention is the only thing that makes the art understandable in the first place. Where on that spectrum do you lie? Do you think the artist's intention is the only one that matters, or is it more down to the individual to experience it? Regardless of which one you agree with, one question is abundantly clear. If the DJ has no intention behind what they're doing, can they really call themselves an artist? The third aspect to this argument is that of skill. It can be said that someone who is highly skilled at something can be called an artist. 
This could be your local barista who's amazing at creating insane latte art, or a plumber who can dislodge turds in your pipes using only a slide whistle and a small peanut. With this in mind, could DJs slip through this artistic loophole? For the purposes of this video, I'm going to simplify this down into two main categories of skill. Technical DJ skill and track selection. You only have to watch a few minutes of the World DMC Championships to understand the insane levels of skill some DJs have. Personally, I see turntablism as a separate art form from DJing. These DJs use turntables and mixers as instruments in themselves. They create entirely new sounds and compositions and do so with crazy levels of skill. There's no doubt in my mind that these types of DJs are artists. Can we apply the same for the more traditional DJ who's more concerned with beat matching and blending tracks together continuously for the purposes of playing in a club? There's definitely skill involved in beat matching and mixing tracks in at the right times. But is it so skilled that it earns the title artist? Before we can answer that, I think we have to dig a little bit deeper into the next category, which is track selection. This is probably one of the least celebrated but most important parts of DJing. If we're taking the position that DJs are performance artists, then their ability to choose and combine tracks in order to guide an audience on a musical journey is surely the core of our argument. This is what I believe elevates DJs from being jukeboxes to performance artists. So are DJs artists? I mentioned at the start that I ran a poll on my Instagram and the results were quite surprising. Everyone that voted thought they were both artists and performers, like some kind of Toyota Prius hybrid thing. But what they think and I think doesn't matter. Do you think DJs are artists? Sound off in the comments because I think this is a really interesting debate and I'd love to know what you think. And remember, the wonderful thing about art is nobody knows what the fuck it is.